The inscribed rectangle problem is unique from the other problems in this packet because our constraint value is actually a variable. Uh, but in this case, we know that it represents some number, so we're going to actually treat that constraint like a constant when we deal with the calculus in this problem. So we're given to find the dimensions of a rectangle of the greatest area that can be inscribed in a semicircle of a radius r and state the dimensions. So it's helpful here to actually sort of envision the semicircle on a coordinate plane. So here's my coordinate plane. And here's my semicircle with a radius of r. So I'm going to draw in that radius, and it has a length of r. Now, if you think about a point on a circle with a radius of r, that's just at some random x, y point. And so if I drew in sort of the vertical distance here, that would be a length of y. And if I drew in the horizontal distance to the y-axis, that would be a length of x. But if I fully inscribe a rectangle, I would actually have two of those x's along sort of that width. And so that purple rectangle I drew would have an area of 2x. That would be the length times the, the width of y. Now, I need to relate um, x in terms of y because I only want one of those variables in my actual area formula that I end up uh, finding the derivative of in my goal to maximize. And so that's where r comes into play because you'll notice here in drawing in that radius length we've created a sort of mini right triangle and the side lengths of a right triangle can be related with Pythagorean theorem. So r squared equals y squared plus and this other leg here would just be x squared. And I need to solve for either x or y. It doesn't really matter in this case which one you solve for. It's uh, whatever one you're more comfortable with. Um, I'm going to solve for uh, y, just because I like to write my functions in terms of x, just a personal preference. So I'm going to subtract that x squared over. So I have r squared minus x squared equals y squared and I need just y, so I'm gonna take the square root, and I don't have a positive or negative solution because we're only looking at positive y values. And so there's my value of y that I'm gonna plug right in here to get my final sort of area function. So area as a function of x would be equal to 2x times the quantity, the square root of r squared minus x squared. Um, and you might be going, oh, I have an extra variable here. I have an x and I have an r. But remember, r is a constant value. It's a number. We just don't know what that number is. It's like you have a pi in your equation. So I'm in a good place to take a derivative here. So I want to find a prime. But to find a prime, I'm going to need to use product rule. Uh, and so I have sort of my two pieces, that 2x and then the square root. So the derivative of 2x would just be 2. And then the square root stays the same, so r squared minus x squared. And if we remember from a previous problem, we can think of that square root as uh, a whole set of numbers to that one half power. So when I go and do the other half of my product rule, I'm going to have one half times the quantity uh, r squared minus x squared, but all to the negative one half power. And that's the outer derivative, but there is an inner function there, so it's under the square root. Now, r squared, remember, is a number like pi, and the derivative of a constant is zero. So it's actually zero, and then times the uh, derivative of minus x squared, which would be negative 2x. And I'm going to simplify this derivative down a little because unlike my previous problems, this isn't something I can just plug into Desmos to solve when I set it equal to zero to look for my critical values. Uh, so I have the 2, the square root of r squared minus x squared. Um, I'm going to actually rewrite my negative square root and stick that down in the denominator. 
And if I notice, I have a 2x here. Um, and then I have a 1 half, so I could think of a 2 down in the denominator, and then it's times a negative 2x. Um, so I got a little bit of simplifying I can do here. And then that whole numerator is going to end up becoming a negative 2x squared. Uh, so I'm going to just erase, actually, and rewrite that as negative 2x squared. All right, and we want to know when this derivative is equal to 0. So just like with some of our other problems that involved um, negative powers, I'm going to move this term with the radical and the denominator over to the left side of my equation by adding it. So I get 2x squared all over the square root of r squared minus x squared, and that equals the 2 times the square root of r squared minus x squared. And I want to get that radical out of the denominator, so I'm going to multiply both sides by it. So I'm keeping my 2x squared over here. I have 2 times the square root of r squared minus x squared, and that's times the same exact thing, r squared minus x squared. When you multiply two radicals that are the same underneath, think the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. Um, that's the same thing as the square root of 25, which is just equal to 5. So here, where I'm multiplying two square roots, and they both have an r squared minus x squared under the denominator, that's the same thing as just 2 times r squared minus x squared. All of a sudden, this is uh, not quite as scary looking. And that's still equal to 2x squared. And now I notice I have 2's on each side, and I could divide both sides by 2. And so that would cancel out to 1. Um, and so now I just have r squared minus x squared equals x squared. So I'm going to add that x squared over to the left side, which would get me 2x squared equals r squared. Divide by 2, because remember we're solving for x. That's the critical value, so r squared over 2. And last but not least, I would take the square root. And so that could be a positive or a negative square root of r squared over 2. But we're dealing with dimensions, so we can't really have a negative solution, so we're just the positive value. <sighs> that's a lot of work. Um, and that's not even what we're being asked for. We want the dimensions of the rectangle. And if you remember, x was just half of a side length, so the whole dimension would be equal to 2x. So 2x would actually result in 2 times that, r squared over 2. And we also need the value of y. And if you remember, um, y equaled the square root of r squared minus x squared. So let's plug that x squared in there to find y to get our dimensions. And so I have the square root of r squared minus the square root of r squared over 2, all squared. The squaring a square root undoes each other, so I just have an r squared minus r squared over 2. Um, think about this with common denominators, so that would be the same thing as 2r squared over 2 minus r squared over 2, and so 2 minus 1 is just 1, and so that simplifies down to the square root of r squared over 2. Huh, the same value as our x. Isn't that interesting? So the dimensions that we were looking for would be um, a rectangle with a height of square root r squared over 2 units and a width of 2 times r squared over 2 units. And you'll notice um, I sort of shortchanged my work a little here and I didn't uh, use the first derivative test to check that this was a maximum, but you should. Um, but this was more to give you a general sense of how to handle that r um, in a problem where we're given 
a variable for our constant constraint, but we need to treat it like a constant. And hopefully this sort of helps you understand how to tackle a problem that looks like this.